Hi there, my name is Michael Crossan and welcome to my channel. Usually I would do these devotions live called Light and Lockdown at two o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. However, with today, um, lockdown has this effect that I assume I'm not the only one where time becomes a bit skew with and the hours just merge into one. So by the time two o'clock happened, I looked at my phone and it was quite later than two. So my apologies, um, that's never happened to me before. Um, just locked down and life. But I'm thankful that I can still record and share God's word with you too. So please forgive me. <clears throat> and I'd like to share with you a short reading and an encouragement at the time. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me please to Luke's Gospel, the 18th chapter. Verses 35 to 43. Just a short story. Then it happened, as he came near Jericho, that a certain blind man sat by the road begging, and hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. So they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, and he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet, but we he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, he asked him, saying, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made, your, made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. God always blesses the reading of his word. My title is Mercy Never Fails in Lockdown. Mercy Never Fails in Lockdown. I just want to pray. And perhaps you've got a need or unspoken need. Just leave it to the Lord in prayer. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares upon you. He cares for you. Father, I just pray for those watching. Lord, I do not know what they're going through, but you do. Lord, calm their heart. Be with them. Lord, I don't know what they're going through, but you do. Help them day by day. Show them that you love them. You demonstrated your love while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. Show them your loving hand in their life. We pray for those who've been affected by COVID. We continue to pray for the MacGuffin and the Brown family and others who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who've lost loved ones in COVID. I think of a girl who I went in a, a choir with who passed away at the age of 50. Sharon of COVID. And I ask you, Lord, be with her and her, or be here with her family, Lord. And uh, Lord, I just ask that, that we as a society would be mindful to adhere to social distancing and all the health and safety regulations until the vaccine comes. Lord, I pray for our leaders that you would give them great wisdom in these days. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So Jesus is travelling and he's coming near Jericho. And there was a certain blind man who was begging by the road. And he was hearing a multitude pass by and ask what, what it meant. And they said that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. It's amazing when Jesus' is, name is spread... People pick up. People nowadays use his name as a swear word or, or use his name to make a prophet. Or others just believe he is just a prophet, not the son of God. But when Jesus was on the earth, his name traveled far and wide. I wonder what he heard. Did he hear about how Jesus touched and healed and restored? Or how he granted mercy to the tax collectors? And it says, and he, be, be, he cried out saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And I chose this verse because we keep thinking of Christmas time, you know, from the line of David. And here this blind man says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Mercy is a word, in my opinion, that is disappearing from our culture. In our culture's vocabulary. If you make one mistake in life, whether it be years ago or even now, 
people seem to forget mercy. But let me tell you this. God is more merciful than we give him credit. That's what my mom taught me many years ago. And it's so true. Remember the prophet said in Habakkuk, in wrath, remember mercy. God remembered mercy. God demonstrated his mercy. Paul talks about God's mercy. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God is rich in mercy. And the crowd was saying to him, be quiet, be quiet. And this man had a desire for the Son of God, the Son of David, the Messiah, to have mercy on him because he knew he was a sinner. It didn't matter to him that he was a blind man, an outcast uh, uh, from society. He wanted mercy. He wanted Jesus to have mercy on him. And I don't know what you've done. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what ails you. I don't know what's troubling you. But when you call out to Christ, he listens. And notice, Jesus stood still. Wherever you are watching this, at home, on the phone, or wherever, when you call the name of Christ, you have his attention. He is up there praying for you, making intercession, as the book of Hebrews declares, for you. And he stood still and he commanded that this blind man be brought to him and saying to him, what do you want me to do for you? And that's a that's a big question. What would you ask? What would Jesus do for you? Michael, I would just love to spend Christmas with my family. I just want things to return to normal. I just want this, that and the other. But, but going beyond that, what is it that you really want that will fill the emptiness in your void? Because let me tell you, it doesn't matter if you're in the, a perfect relationship, perfect marriage, have the best car, best house, best kids, dogs, whatever. If you have this void in your heart, you need Christ. If I find in myself desires that nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical conclusion is I was made for another world. You and I were made for another world. We're just passing through. Charles Dickens said this, we are all passengers to the grave. The grave unites us, but eternity divides us. Where will you spend it? Heaven or hell? That is your choice. I can't make it for you. Coming back to our story. He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. I don't know how long he was blind for. Was he blind since birth or did he lose his sight? Then Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people. When they saw it, gave praise to God. I was reading the life of George and Stephen Jeffries, the founder of the Elam Pentecostal movement. And how they saw great moves of God, people walking um, ears being opened, uh, people hearing again, people seeing for the, for the first time in years, or in some cases for the first time in their life. But does God heal today? Yes, he does. I am very privileged to have a cousin who the Lord has used mightily. He was praying for this particular woman in this church for years and years that the Lord would restore her sight. She lost her sight in her early 20s and, and this went on for years, she was blind. She prayed that the Lord would touch her side when nothing happened. But then one day, he received a letter. Uh, several days after this particular service, he was preaching that, saying this, Pastor, my eyesight is being restored as I write this letter to you. God still heals. God still touches. And God can make you whole. Will you let him? I believe God can heal you. Right now, I believe God can touch you. I believe God can change you. God is rich in mercy. God is rich in grace, rich in love. His arms are stretched out to you. What will you do? What will you do with Jesus? Will you accept him or will you reject him? I leave this decision with you. 
Thank you for listening to me and I pray that this devotional will bless you and encourage you. I just want to pray for you. And if you want to become a Christian or come back to Christ, just repeat this prayer after me. And the only thing I'll ever ask you to do is tell a Christian friend or a pastor or minister and get planted into a church. That's all I ask of you. You don't need to tell me. If you want to, that's okay. But feel free to do so. I'm glad that this has blessed and encouraged many people, these devotionals over lockdown. Let's just pray. And if you want to pray this prayer, repeat that after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you. In the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask you to touch me, to change me, to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to save me. I ask you to keep me. For I know that you will keep me. I belong to you and you belong to me. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for raising, being raised from the dead. Lord, I trust you. Help me to serve you. Help me to love you all the days of my life. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. For those who are sick in body, I just want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray for those who are watching who are ill. I don't know what their ails them. But Lord, I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray right now that you would touch them, that you would restore, that you would heal, and that you would open eyes to see you, that you are sovereign. Lord, I do not know what the future holds for them, but we leave them in your loving care. Lord, touch them, we pray. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining with me. I promise you that I will remember my next lockdown devotional at the right time. My apologies. And I look forward to speaking to you again. Take care, everyone, and God bless. Bye-bye.